The beat'em of genre thrived on the 16-bit consoles. It begs the question of which 16-bit console, the almighty Sega Genesis or the great Super Nintendo, had the best beat-em-ups. In this episode of the Big Retro Show, I will dig deeper into the 16-bit console beat-em-ups to try and answer that. But first, some ground rules. No games that appeared on both consoles, only the original iteration of a game on the given console, and not an upgraded version on another console, only games released in North America, and no games that were similar, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, and Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist, because, well, they are both epic games. With that out of the way, let's get to the games. We kick things off on the Super Nintendo side. Nintendo didn't make any of its own beat-em-ups, relying on publishers like Capcom and Taito to bring the SNES some beat-em-up action. I first came to know the Ninja Warriors in the arcades and used to play it at an amusement park named Great America. I was never really good at it, so when the Ninja Warriors appeared on the SNES, I missed it. But so glad that I played it for this episode. As the story goes, there's an evil dude named Bangler who wants to take over the world and has somehow found a way to make people stop thinking. The only hope for humanity are three ninja cyborgs who are tasked with stopping Bangler and his evil army. The story is pretty out there, but hey, it is a video game. You play as one of three ninja warriors in the side-scrolling beat-em-up. There's a classic big dude aptly named Ninja, the fast but less powerful Konoichi, and the balanced ninja named Kamataichi. Each warrior carries a different weapon and has different movesets, strengths, and weaknesses. The game leads into the typical stereotypical player dynamics that most beat-em-ups fall into. But hey, that's okay. Each character is a joy to play and is more effective during certain levels, so there is a bit of planning to do when choosing your character. The enemies in this game are mostly human enemies, with a mix of cyborgs and other mechanical things to destroy, and the bosses are fun to fight as well. This game is probably one of the easier beat-em-ups I have played, certainly easier than its arcade namesake. However, I was playing the game on normal mode, and there is a harder setting. The game's graphics and sounds are really good and add to the game's production values. Overall, The Ninja Warriors is a great beat-em-up that never made it onto the Sega Genesis, and it is a worthy game to play if you like beat-em-ups. You might be thinking, the Super Nintendo is surely going to win this contest, but not so fast. Have you ever played Alien Storm? Alien Storm is a port of the arcade game of the same name, in which you take on an invading alien army in this unconventional weapon-based beat-em-up. In Alien Storm, you play as one of three heroes. There's a dude named Gordon who fights with his lightning gun, the dudette named Carla who attacks with a flamethrower, and this gnarly robot dude named Scooter who attacks with a cyberweb. Aside from their weapons, the characters all play similarly, meaning there is no stereotypical strong but slow character, fast but weak character, or all around balanced character, which in my opinion breaks the whole mold. The attacks in Alien Storm are pretty basic, but for some reason trick my mind, because you wield the gun very much like you would a baseball bat. It's so very strange. The game gives you life and energy. As long as you have energy, your weapon will have lightning or fire to shoot. But if you run out, then your character is forced to swing the weapon at the invading aliens. Having enough energy also allows you to unleash a special screen clearing attack that you will want to use sparingly because the game is challenging and only allows you 3 continues with 1 life per continue. Luckily, the enemies in this game drop energy and health from time to time to make the battle last longer. This game mixes up a 3 quarters playfield of combat with first person shooting and speed running levels. It's a nice way to break up the combat. As I mentioned before, the combat is pretty basic. You can attack, do a dash attack, and do a jump attack. There are no cool grapple moves in this game, which is a bummer. There are 8 levels in all to battle through, and like many other beat-em-ups, taking this game on with a friend makes it more enjoyable and easier to boot. Have you played this game? Sure, Alien Storm is cool and all, but is it better than Batman Returns on the SNES? 
Most video games based on movies are bad, so when I first played Batman Returns for the SNES, I was pleasantly surprised. The game closely follows the events of the movie, and you will be fighting both the Catwoman, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, and the Penguin, who is played by the great Danny DeVito. On a side note, this was the last great Batman film ever produced, in my opinion. And that's because it was directed by this guy. Anywho, the game's moveset is pretty solid. You can punch and kick your enemies and pull off some grappling moves that add to the excitement of the gameplay. I really like slamming enemies into the ground or into the background. Butting two enemies heads is also very satisfying. The game's levels are varied. Most of the action will be taking place on a three quarter play field, but every now and then you will fight in a more side scrolling level where you will not be able to punch and kick, but get to throw batarangs at your enemies and jump using your grappling hook. The overall look and feel of this game really matches the film very well, with its dark undertones and mostly gray and black colors. It certainly gives the game a whole Tim Burton feel. The sound is ripped from the movies and the SNES's sound chip really does a good job in this game. The game's enemies mostly consist of clowns and freaks from Penguin's Carnival. It can be challenging. Overall, the game's difficulty is up there. You can start the game with 7 lives and the game allows you 3 continues. The boss fights can be brutal, especially against the main villains of the game. At any rate, this game is a worthy beat em up on the SNES and is one of the best of the 16-bit era. Sure, Batman gets all the movies and the love, really, but the Punisher's video game on the Sega Genesis just might be better. Much like its arcade Big Brother, the Punisher brings some great beat em up action on the Sega Genesis. By now, you all know the story of the Punisher. He is out for revenge against the people responsible for the death of his wife and child. The game lets you play as a Punisher or Frank Castle. I took the game on as a Punisher, of course, and had a blast with it. The moves in the Punisher pretty much mirror the arcade game. You can punch, kick, and do grapple attacks and dash attacks. You can also do a special attack if you push the jump and attack buttons at the same time, at the cost of some health of course, and throw grenades against your enemies. This game is chock full of weapons you can use against the bad guys, but the thing is you get limited use of them. For example, a baseball bat may last a good 3 whacks before it breaks. It's rather annoying, but something that you get used to. The enemies in this game are colorful to fight against. During certain points in the game, the Punisher busts out his firearm, and you can shoot your enemies and take their guns as they lay dying to use against their comrades. It's good fun! The game's bosses also mirror its arcade counterpart and are fun to fight. There's not much in the way of replay value in this game, however. The Punisher's graphics and sounds are overall actually pretty good, and I like the big character models that they use in this game. Overall, this is a good beat em up to play on the Sega Genesis. Now, let's talk about a couple of real Punishers. That would be Billy and Jimmy Lee of Super Double Dragon. I have to admit that I've been wanting to talk about this game for a very long time. Super Double Dragon is a game that doesn't get enough love from the retro gaming crowd, and so I had to include it in this episode. Being a fan of the original Double Dragon in the arcades, and the game on the Nintendo, I was looking forward to how well the game would translate onto the 16-bit hardware. I was not disappointed. You play a series staples Billy and Jimmy Lee who are on a quest to defeat the Shadow Warriors gang. What sets Super Double Dragon apart aside from its complete makeup over of the characters, it's its stellar moveset. This game lets you do a lot of violence on your enemies in so many different ways. The game lets you use blocks, which if you time correctly, allows you to grab your opponent's arm and then do an awesome counter attack. The game also lets you grapple your enemies and lets you kick and punch them much like you would expect in any Double Dragon game. Aside from the moves you can do, you can also wield weapons, and boy oh boy are they a joy to use. The nunchucks made me feel like Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon. It's so fun using these nunchucks, I am so in love with them. You can also use a bow stick, and of course, you get to use some knives and boulders against your enemies. The other notable addition to the satisfying combat this game has to offer is a power-up meter. You can use the power-up meter by holding either the L or R buttons and charging the attack. A partial charge will let you do a swinging fist. A half charge will let you unleash a hurricane kick, and a full charge buffs you up and lets you take out enemies with just one punch. I can remember at the time thinking that was so cool, as other beat em ups just let you do super attacks at the cost of some of your health. The game's combat does not disappoint, but that doesn't mean that the game is perfect. There is a lot of slowdown, and I mean a lot. 
It seems like the game struggles at times to draw all of the colorful graphics at once, so you will have to get used to that. The enemies in this game will provide a challenge, but overall you can beat them up fairly easily, especially with a friend at your side. The game's graphics and sounds are really good for the time, although you have to realize you are playing on a 16-bit system. Aside from the slowdown in Super Double Dragon and the lack of a dash attack, this game is a great beat up that anyone who loves the SNES should play. Super Double Dragon is a game that stands up to some of Sega's best beat em ups and really does give them a run for their money. What's better than fighting everyone in sight like you do in Super Double Dragon? Doing so on the back of a dragon, of course. One of the reasons that the Sega Genesis is such a great console is because of the Golden Axe games. And while there are three in all, I think my favorite is the original Golden Axe, which is an arcade board of the excellent arcade beat-em-up. What is there to say about this game that hasn't already been said? If you have never played this game, do yourself a favor and play it. You play as one of three gnarly medieval warriors. There's Gilius Thunderhead who wields an axe, Axe Battler who wields a sword, and Tyrius Flare who also fights with a sword. Each of the characters can use magic that is a joy to use against your enemies and become stronger with each potion you steal from these little gnome dudes who run around the levels and bonus stages. One of the things that blew me away with this game is the ability to ride dragons and other mounts. I thought this was so cool when I first saw it in the arcades and the Sega Genesis version is every bit as fun. The other thing that I loved about this game are the enemies. They are tough and gnarly looking and a lot of fun to fight. The bosses are equally impressive and provide the perfect mix of challenge while letting you get your licks in. Golden Axe is a perfect beat em up and what's more, the Sega Genesis version has an extra end level and boss not seen in the arcade version. I thought this was the coolest thing guys. This is a game that everyone, everyone needs to play. Okay, okay, it's really hard to debate the greatness that is Golden Axe, but King of the Dragon sort of makes up for it on the SNES. Sort of. Much like Golden Axe, this is a weapon-based medieval warrior beat -em up but that's where the similarities end. In King of the Dragons, you play as one of five playable characters, each play nearly identical except for the elf, which is totally overpowered. The game is set in a Dungeons and Dragons-like setting, and you will take on 13 levels of beat -em up action. The dude you're going after is an evil wizard who is causing a ruckus and you must take out his armies to prevail. You might be thinking that 13 levels is quite a bit for a beat em up and you'd be right but most of the stages are really short where you take on a handful of enemies before taking on a boss. The bosses aren't too difficult to take out once you learn their patterns. The combat in this game is nowhere near as fun as it is in Golden Axe. The game lacks a dash or grapple attack and the character's weapon reach except for the elf who fights with a bow is too short. Aside from a basic basic attack you get a jump button and a special magic attack that takes some of your life when you use it. Surprise surprise! The game has a bit of an RPG element baked in and you can power up your shield, attack and health by defeating enemies and bosses. The game also has little orbs that you can uncover by smashing items in the game and if you destroy the orb it unleashes the magic on the enemies. The game's enemies are repetitive, you will be fighting skeletons, lizard dudes, kobolds and trolls. The game recycles some of the boss characters like this dude riding a dragon. And overall, it is a mediocre experience. One of the things that would make the combat a bit more exciting is the sound the game makes when you take enemies out. It's just not violent enough. Alas, this isn't as good a game as any of the Google Next games, but it's still fun, especially with a friend. If you want to talk about a unique and overly difficult beat-em-up on the Sega Genesis, let's talk about Comic Zone. If you've played this game, then you know. If you haven't, then be ready for one of the most unforgiving beat-em-ups you will find, period. The game breaks a lot of the beat-em-up formulas that we come to know and that it is played on a 2D playfield, much like Ninja Warriors. Except the twist here is that you are in a comic book, fighting panel by panel against enemies and room barriers alike. The game places you in the role of Sketch Turner, who has been magically transferred to his own comic book named Comic Zone. Your goal is to stop this dude named Mortis from becoming a live person. It's wacky, but hey, what do you want? This is a video game after all. Your moveset in Comic Zone is rather simple. One button punches, the other jumps, and another lets you choose items to use during combat. The items you can use consist of a rat that shocks people, a knife, extra lives, or bombs. The healing in this game is rather wonky. For example, you can only heal with medicine and it only heals a fraction of your health. You are lucky if you find one of these bottles per stage. The obstacles in this room can be deadly, 
and destroying them takes a bit from your life bar, which I found to be a bit absurd. You fight a handful of enemies per comic book panel, and some enemies are easier than others. Overall, this game will test your abilities as a gamer. It wouldn't be so bad if you could get unlimited continues, but that's not the case. If you clear out the previous stages in the level, you can continue exactly one time. It wouldn't be a big deal except you only get one life. Yeah, like I said, this game is difficult. While the fighting lets you pull off combos, it's rather bland. I guess the saving grace for this game is the graphics and sound. They are both excellent. Check it out if you haven't played it and let me know if you can make it past the first level. When you are done getting your ass handed to you in a comic book, come over to the SNES and play some Final Fight. Did you really think I could talk about SNES beat em ups without talking about Final Fight? A port of the excellent arcade game, Final Fight lets you play as two of the three original arcade characters. There is the hulking Mike Hagar and the all around cool guy Cody. Fans of the arcade game were really disappointed with the exclusion of fan favorite guy, and so was I. The SNES version follows the events of the arcade version closely in that you must embark on a mission to save Hagar's daughter Jessica from the Mad Gear Gang. The action takes place in the fictional Metro City and you must defeat waves of colorful goons to rescue her. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this game both in the arcades and on the SNES. It was sort of a coup for the SNES to have this game on its console and it's one of the reasons that I love the SNES. The game's combat is super satisfying, albeit follows the tropes that I am used to seeing in other beat em ups. You know, the big dude is strong but slow, and the well rounded dude packs a punch and has a little bit of speed. The small dude, although he isn't here in this edition, is faster but weaker. You get the point. One of the things that I love about this game is how large the characters are. You really get the sense that they are tough, simply because they are huge and take on equally huge bad guys. It never gets old using Hagar's super pile driver and his suplex. The Cody character has some good moves too, but for me it's always about the sheer power of Hagar. The enemies in this game are no pushovers and are a lot of fun to fight. Take for example this fat dude who runs really fast. And then there's this Andre the Giant looking dude named Andor. How did Capcom get away with that? At any rate, the enemies and boss fights in this game are what make this game special. The other cool thing about this game are the graphics and sound. Both are top notch and helped cement Capcom as a force to be reckoned with on the SNES. I should note that this game was also released on the Sega CD which featured the missing guy, but this is a video that will only cover the game on the base consoles. Still, the original Final Fight released on the SNES circa 1991 is a must play for fans of beat em ups and people who really love the SNES. Finally, let's talk about the GOAT. Let's talk about the game that many consider is the best beat em up of all time on the Sega Genesis. You might have heard of it, it's called Streets of Rage 2. The game improves on the original Streets of Rage in every way. With two new fighters added to the roster, the fun factor of this game is off the charts. I think one of my favorite aspects of this game is the ability to do a wide variety of moves your characters can do. The movesets feel natural and unique. Along with Axel and Blaze from the original Streets of Rage, you get to play as this big dude named Max and Eddie, the dude who fights on rollerblades and is a blast to use. Aside from your basic attack, you get to do a variety of grapple moves against your enemies, as well as dash attacks. The game also lets you do a super attack at the cost of some of your health and can be devastating. The enemies and bosses in this game provide quite a challenge and are really fun to fight. The game also features a wide variety of weapons to use and let me tell you, the sound of you cracking an enemy over the head with a pipe is something that every gamer needs to experience. The music in this game is stellar and was mostly composed by Yuzo Koshiro and it is said to be one of his greatest works. I would have to agree with that. It really fits the game well and makes you excited to see what's next. It's really hard to find things to dislike about this game because this game is that dang good. Each console has some great beat em ups, many of them I didn't talk about in this episode, but as far as which console has the best? I really, really hate to say this because I'm a big Sega fanboy, but I have to give it to the Super Nintendo. In playing the games for this episode, I had the most fun playing these Super Nintendo games. And sure, the beat em ups featured on the SNES were not developed by Nintendo, but you know what? That doesn't get in the way of the fun. That's not to say that the Sega Genesis is a slouch when it comes to beat em ups, because the almighty Sega Genesis is an awesome machine and has some great games on it, including some beat em ups. But the SNES edges it out in terms of beat em ups. And that's going to be it for today's episode of The Big Retro Show. Thank you for sticking around. And if you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel, dropping a comment, and leaving a like. And I will catch you next time on The Big Retro Show.